Today was JFK's birthday, and Lamar Waldron dropped by today to talk about the parallels between the crimes being committed by Republicans in the 60s and the crimes being committed by Republicans today. Check it out. I think you'll find it mind-boggling. Leave your comments, ding the bell, tell your friends about us, and please subscribe to our channel. Welcome back. Tom Harmon here with you. On the line with us is Lamar Waldron, um, my old writing, writing partner. His new book, The Hidden History of the JFK Assassination. Uh, he also has a book out about uh, uh, Watergate, Nixon. Lamar, what's that title? Watergate, The Hidden History. There you go. That's straightforward. Um, hidden history, hot stuff right now. Um, so we were talking about Bill Barr. He was working for the CIA. The CIA was trying to cover up their involvement back in 1960 when Richard Nixon was vice president. He reached out to the CIA, and uh, they put together a deal with uh, Nixon's buddies in the mafia and some of the CIA's buddies in the mafia to assassinate Fidel Castro. It didn't work out, and thus Nixon didn't get elected uh, in 1960 as president. JFK did. JFK inherited this and didn't know about it. This whole thing, you know, led to the, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We've, we've covered all this. Um, but the CIA, now we're in the 70s, and the CIA is covering this stuff up. And uh, through its, through its uh, chief counsel, its head lawyer, uh, Bill Barr, do I have do I, have I recapped everything correctly? Right, right. Bill Barr was one of I, I think two or three general counsels for the CIA in the mid seventies, and and they're just withholding everything. I mean, I mean, all the Watergate burglars were were current or former CIA agents. In other words, one one of the Watergate burglars was on the payroll of the CIA right. at the time. So so so, so, so there, was, there was so much the CIA had to cover up. There were the murders of congressional witnesses who had formerly worked for the CIA, like Sam Giancana, like Johnny Roselli. Uh, Jimmy Hoffa had helped with an earlier version of the CIA mafia plots back in 1959. So then, then these people are all getting murdered before they can testify uh, to these congressional committees. And, and by the way, CIA uh, uh, Cuban exiles who had worked for the CIA in the early 60s, on the same mafia plots and, and other efforts to get rid of Castro, they were involved with two horrible things in the mid seventies: uh, the blowing up of the former Chilean ambassador Orlando Letelier, I, I think I'm saying that right, and blowing up a Cubana airliner with more than a hundred people on it. So the CIA had to cover up a lot of stuff. You know, they worried that even all this assassination. JFK assassination stuff could lead to these other things. And, so, and it wasn't, Lamar, let's just be clear. It, it wasn't that the CIA was running around killing these people. These, these the, the CIA was in bed with the mob. The mob was doing housekeeping, killing off these people. But exactly because the CIA right. was in bed with them, they had to help, they had to cover it up. And, and in fact, one of the cover-ups went even farther. So after Johnny Roselli was killed, after he had testified in secret session several times to the church committee, so he was murdered spectacular mob fashion as a signal that he had talked too much and others shouldn't talk, and his body's found floating in an in a oil drum, um, a, a new committee was formed, the House Select Committee on Assassinations, just to look into the assassinations of JFK and Martin Luther King. And the CIA went even farther. They didn't just withhold information from that House Select Committee. They went even farther than that. They mounted a secret operation where they recalled a, a guy, uh, George Joannides, from retirement. Who had, who had handled a Cuban exile group that had dealt with Lee Harvey Oswald. And when the, when the House committee said, we want to talk to the CAA agent who managed this Cuban exile group that was dealing with Lee Harvey Oswald, the CAA said, well, we'll send you this expert to help you find that guy. Well, the guy they sent to the House Select Committee was that guy, George Joannides, who had run that Cuban exile group that dealt with Oswald. But, you know, he was like, well, gee, I can't find the guy you're looking for, he told the committee. We're right. looking real hard. But he was the guy. <laughs> so I'm talking about obstruction of justice. Now, so, it's unclear. So where is Bill Barr in all this? Well, see, that's what's not clear, because while there was clear obstruction of justice there on the part of the CIA, did Barr have a role in that? Was it another sage? We don't know. All of that material is some of the million-plus pages of information still being withheld to this day related to the JFK assassination. So is that is that why it's been being withheld? Uh, I, you know, not not to cover up for Bill Barr, but to you know to to cover well, well, up the like CIA's say, involvement they, they, they with the mafia. They don't want to nail down who was saying what. Like I say, people should have and could probably still be today prosecuted for obstructing Congress with that with that that deceitful operation. Bill Barr might be. You know, so let's just cover everything up. 
but, right. but now I now we can just so so that cover up worked, you know. Uh, and so now we can flash ahead again. We could jump ahead another 10 years or so and now get to the late 80s when Bill Barr kind of resurfaces again in things. And I'll, I'll let you set the stage a little bit for where, where we are in the late 80s, by the late 80s. So uh, this is, well, I, instead of my setting the stage, I'm not sure exactly where you're going with this. So, oh, so. okay. Let, let's go to 1988, 1989. We're, we're just going to skip the Reagan presidency, except... Okay, you're talking about Barr and Noriega now. Right, right. So except we're, we're going to skip the Reagan presidency, except for the fact that Reagan's uh, uh, attorney general had to resign and, and should have gone to prison, uh, Edwin Meese, because he was involved in three scandals, Iran-Contra being one. And so there's a Iran-Contra where Congress said, you can't send money to, to, to these... Uh, Contras, you know, yeah. Contras. And, and a lot of the Contras were and were being run by the same Cuban exiles that the CIA had been using since 1960 on the CIA mafia plots and even some on the JFK Almeida Q plan. So, right. it, and, and including at least one who had knowledge of JFK's assassination. So when you hear the word Contras, you don't think well, CIA-backed Cuban exiles. That's what they were, though. And so, so now we come to... Uh, uh, Barr is now a general counsel for the Justice Department, not to say the Justice Department. And, and he writes this memo saying that uh, giving... Uh, so now Bush Sr. is president. Right. Reagan, Vice President Bush Sr. is now president. And William Barr writes a memo, detailed memo, outlining the legal justification that we can go conquer and invade and conquer another country just to arrest that country's leader and bring him back to the United States for trial. And that's Manuel Noriega, the head of Panama. Now, Congress wants to see this memo, right? And, and Barr says, no, 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 I'll kind of summarize it for you. I'll give you a verbal summary. I'll write up a little summary. And then, so you'll know everything that's in this memo, but I won't give you the actual memo. Well, of course, years later, after Barr was gone, uh, it turned out, yeah, he had totally lied to Congress in his testimony and his little summary of his actual memo. So, yeah, again, you can start to see this pattern with, with, with Barr here. And, and, of course, you know, when you do a, you know, when you basically, you know, provide cover for President Bush Sr., that earns you a promotion. And that's exactly what Barr got. He then moved from being a general counsel to deputy attorney general, essentially the Rod Rosenstein for uh, George Bush Sr. And, and in that role, he constantly obstructed the Iran-Contra special prosecutor, kind of like, you know, the uh, uh, Bob Mueller today. This guy was named Lawrence Walsh. And and he was constantly obstructing Lawrence Walsh. If, if, if anyone gets, gets Lawrence Walsh's book called Firewall, it's just full of all this great information. And, and I mean, we're talking very sophisticated operations. It wasn't just Barr. Barr and the Republicans from the White House to Congress, they had coordinated PR efforts. They were constantly attacking the special prosecutor, not just his office, Lawrence Walsh personally. You know how now... Barr is going after the investigators, is investigating the origin of Mueller and, and the whole Trump investigation. The same thing Barr did to Lawrence Walsh, the Iran-Contra special prosecutor, back in the early 90s when he was deputy attorney general, and things only got worse once Lawrence Walsh became attorney general. Now, against this backdrop, you and I and probably everybody listening remembers the great Oliver Stone JFK film. Sure. You know, great film, not great history in some ways, but a great dramatic film, right? And that created, among a lot of people, including you and I, a great interest in the JFK assassination. So while all this around Contra stuff is going, and by the way, there are people like uh, writers like Peter Dale Scott who were saying, wait a minute, I think there's a connection between Iran and Contra and, and some people involved in the JFK assassination and Watergate, you know, and so... That was bubbling below the surface there that, hey, was there a connection here between Iran-Contra and JFK assassination? So Congress found out there were a lot of files left that hadn't been 
uh, disclosed because I think Oliver Stone put that at the end of his movie. We thought there were a few thousand files. Of course, there were millions of pages. And so there was a move to have something called the 1992 JFK Act. Congress, uh, despite all of the, the, the extensive efforts of William Barr, the Attorney General, and uh, President Bush Sr., Congress managed to pass the JFK Records Act to declassify all of the JFK assassination files. They, Congress passed that unanimously in 1992 and gave it to Barr and to Bush to get those files but out Barr, there. But Barr and Bush were up to their eyeballs in a lot of this stuff. They couldn't let that stuff come out. Exactly. And Bush so, was running for re-election that year against Bill Clinton. Exactly. So they couldn't let this stuff come out, right? So in, instead of, of appointing a review board to get those files out in a hurry, they just stonewalled. And instead, so instead of releasing all the JFK assassination files before that election, the 92 election, where, where, where Bush Sr. is facing off against Bill Clinton, uh, they, they obstruct it, they sit on it, and instead, Barr starts giving Bush Sr. advice about how Bush Sr. can avoid prosecution for his role in Iran-Contra by pardoning. So, so uh, Barr and, and Bush Sr. basically... Whoa, what happened? I see him smiling on your screen. It's all right. Okay, so Barr, Barr and uh, 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 Bush Sr. I'm, I'm sorry. Say it again, Nor Lamar. Barr and President Bush Sr. Right, and Bush Sr. are 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 freaked out that the JFK Act has passed. By the way, we didn't we didn't uh, discuss, and you can we can circle around to this if you want, or we can move forward if you'd prefer. Um, we have about uh, two and a half minutes here in this segment. Um, we didn't talk about Noriega's role in all this. You know, this was uh, one of uh, Bush Sr.'s big accomplishments was busting Noriega. Why did he want to take out Noriega, and what was Barr's role in that? Well, again, so Barr wrote that legal justification that, that we did touch on where, uh, you know, Barr lied to Congress about this flimsy justification and, and said it had things it didn't have, didn't tell them what he did put in it. And then, and basically Noriega had been on the CIA payroll back in the mid-1970s when Bush was CIA director, of course. And, and then, and then uh, a lot of the Cuban exiles, I mean, you and I think a lot of the Cuban exiles and the people that fought in the Bay of Pigs, we talked to those people, but there were a lot of those people that then, after the CIA pulled their support back in the 60s, they got into drug trafficking big time, okay? Mm -hmm. And so... That was another thing the CIA director Bush Sr. back in the 70s was trying to, to hide was that all these, a lot of the, these Cuban exile drug traffickers were supported by the CIA, some were still working for the CIA. So Noriega was just one of many uh, drug traffickers from the 70s and in the 80s backed by the CIA. And when Bush needed a way to distract the country from Iran-Contra and from Bush's on role in it, he has Barr phony up this legal justification, lie to Congress about it, and Bush, you know, invades Panama, kills at least hundreds, if not more than a thousand civilians needlessly. Noriega, I believe, is, you and I went to, you know, drove past that little isolated prison there. By the way, you know who prosecuted Noriega was a good friend of William Barr by the name of Robert Mueller. Really? Yes. Yes, wow. that is when that is when Robert Mueller apparently that is that is when Robert Mueller and William Barr became good friends. Their wives remained good friends over the years. I mean, I, I think even you know into the two thousands, uh, Mueller's wife and Barr's wife were going to Bible study together. Yeah. So in other words, as much as as much as Trump likes to talk about the friendship between Comey and Mueller, which you know there was a relationship there. I don't know. I'd call them you know buddy buddy. Yes, Barr and Mueller are buddy buddy. So whenever you hear Mueller talking today and and tying himself in knots, not to cast Barr publicly in a bad light, you just have to keep that sort of yeah. So they Mueller, the Mueller Barr team formed in the process the I think the illegal prosecution of Noriega after the illegal invasion of Panama. So um, so 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 everything worked out though. Thanks to William Barr, Bush pardoned those, those I believe it was five people, including the former uh, Casper Weinberger was the main one, 
Um, Line with us is Lamar Waldron, his book, The Hidden History of the JFK Assassination. We're talking about uh, the role of Bill Barr and the Bush family, and now Donald Trump, let's get to, um, in all of this stuff. Uh, it's, it's getting very, very strange. So it, it, Donald Trump ran for president on the explicit promise in 2016 that he was going to release all the JFK records. 2017 came and went, and I didn't see any JFK records being released. What happened? Well, there were some released. There were a few thousand released, none of the important ones, of course. And and then, so in October of 2017, when they were all supposed to, finally, all supposed to be released, even the most sensitive, all supposed to be released, uh, you know, and you could just black out informant names who might still be alive, but release everything. Uh, Trump, uh, you know, decides, well, I'll, we'll release some now. We'll kick the can down the road six months. I'll give everybody time. Six months later, he kicked the can, the can down the road again to October of 2021. Hmm. So Bush has decreed that all the JFK files won't be released until 2021, yeah. when he might not even be president anymore. Right. And we're not talking a small number of files here either. So what, what role does Mitch McConnell play in all this? Well, so... Mitch McConnell isn't going to complain about any of this because Mitch McConnell started his career as the assistant to one of the Warren commissioners, the guy from Kentucky. Uh, it might have been Sherman Cooper, but, but one, of the, one of the Warren commissioners was from Kentucky, and Mitch McConnell started his role then. So even though Chuck Grassley has made noises in Congress about wanting the, the JFK files released, Mitch McConnell, not Grassley, rules what happens in the Senate. And Mitch McConnell is not going to go out of his way because, again, you know, a lot of people today think the Warren Commission is the only government investigation. There were at least, you know, that was one of five, and, like, the other ones don't exist. And so Mitch McConnell doesn't want that stuff to come out. Well, and in one of those investigations, Congress actually concluded that Kennedy was killed as a consequence of a, of a conspiracy right. that was later covered up. Exactly. And depending on how you count, the third or the fourth, when that, that House committee that the, the CAA, while Barr was in it, engineered that obstruction of justice and massive withholding. Yeah, they concluded JFK was killed by a conspiracy and that Carlos Marcello and Sino Traficati had the motive means opportunity, but they didn't have the proof because the CAA and FBI was withholding so much. And, and as for what's secret now, I mean, we're talking, even the National Archives admits they, they're withholding at least 442,000 pages but according to an NBC News report from when the JFK uh, Review Board ended back in 98, there could be a million CIA records, not pages, records alone. And a lot of those concern, you know, the attempt to kill JFK in Tampa, the JFK Almeida coup plan, what Bernard Barker was doing on that coup plan in 1963, what E. Howard Hunt was doing, what, what some other Cuban leaders who were bought off by Traficante and Marcello were doing. You know, Carlos Marcello's um, uh, hundreds of hours of him on tape and the transcripts of those tapes where he's talking about his role in JFK's assassination after he made a, a full a, a confession, clear confession, to, to in front of an FBI informant when he was in prison. So there's a ton of all the really good stuff is still being withheld. But, you know, we, we're going to have to wait unless, you know, unless Trump is no longer president somehow. Uh, we're going to have to wait until 2021 to have a look at those records. Yeah. So well, I'm guessing that even if uh, if Trump loses the election, that whoever is the would be the Democratic new Democratic president is is probably not going to come into office in January and say, yeah, let's just hit the ground running and and uh, roll these things out when they're going to get all kinds of blowback from the CIA well, and FBI. On it. Well, well, now here here here's where your listeners. Can 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 help to change history because yeah if if nothing changes you're exactly right but if your listeners get their friends and their friends and you can and we can get one or more I think if we can get one of the Democratic candidates to commit to releasing those files within a couple of months after they take office I think all the rest of the Democratic candidates will have to sign on to that pledge as well so I think if we can get one. Democratic candidate to say, I will release those files. You're not going to have to wait 
until 2021, only to have the candidate. So, Lamar, yeah, no, I get it, and 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 people certainly should contact their their candidates and their and their elected representatives. What do you say to somebody in their 20s who has no recollection of John Kennedy as a president? Uh, John Kennedy is as meaningful to them as Woodrow Wilson would be to you or me, and they're like, you know, why do I care about this? I tell you one big reason. Remember, I'm, we, we talked about the Cuba contingency plans that Bobby Kennedy and, and Al Haig and these guys that were, were, were planned how to, how to keep a lid on the uh, coup plan if it looked like Castro might have found out about it. Right. Well, they, they thought, yeah, Castro might assassinate a U.S. ambassador in Panama, but there's no way on earth he would attack anyone inside the United States. And they just say that all up and down in the few memos we had. There, there were thousands, but we've got a few of those. Right. Now, if, if you flash ahead to 9-11, there were the same, almost the exact same words were being talked about in the intelligence community. Yeah, bin Laden wants to attack the United States and get at us somehow, but he'll never, and it's almost the same wording, he'll, he'll never attack inside the United States. So that's just one example. I mean, if, if the lessons of the Kennedy assassination were known because all the files were declassified, 9-11 probably wouldn't have happened because nobody would make that mistake again. And so mm. that's just one of the reasons. The other big reason is, I mean, we're talking about a lot of secret stuff with the Mueller report now. You know, it, it's been over 50 years on the JFK assassination. If, if they're going to keep that stuff secret, God knows how long they're going to be keeping parts of the Mueller report. I mean, we don't even know right now. Did Mueller investigate Deutsche Bank? Did Mueller investigate financial ties between Trump and the Russians? It we appears don't even not. Know that. It appears not. 